This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time, then you Don't give up what you want, take it back. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for Wrestling Mayhem Show. 615 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professional wrestling. And this week is no different. We're going to celebrate pro wrestling. And we're also going to celebrate the death of love. But anyways, other than that, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but I am Sorgatron here in uh, Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And I got the crew with us. First of all, fresh from his trip. To New Orleans, he is mad, Mike. I uh, Sorg, it's it's been a great day. I'm repping Drago. I'm wearing Mario the Moth. John Johnny Mundo retweeted me today, and apparently Carmella calls the title Cleopatra coming at you. <laughs> I really hope she's embracing that for her like like gimmick change or something. There, that she's that's what she said. She said she called the title Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Jeez. Uh, good to have you back with us. And I know we have a lot of interesting footage, including the Mayhem Club uh, tailgate party video went up today that you were yeah. you got to hang out at. Our, our, our friend, uh, 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 friends from over there, we talked to on the show uh, supporting Connor's Cure. Uh, so it was, it was cool to see you got to get a chance to meet up with those guys and partake. They had excellent pulled pork. <laughs> are you going to review so you're going to review the buffet for us now <laughs> uh, they had better food than the smoother Jeez. they had better food than the smoother did <laughs> oh this, i know i understand you and the smoother has uh have uh some beef but we won't get into that bad, right now bad mike one yes nothing. smoother nothing uh but also with us in the studio is larry hanging out over in the uh producer missy cave what's up Yes, yeah, so just peeking over the monitors there. I don't know. You're like surrounded here. Yes. I mean, there's 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 a lot going on here. We could give you the wide shot so you can see the full breadth of everything happening. Oh, I don't care. Super command center, but no, Larry can't give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Somebody producer Missy apparently she's she's the mayhemer of the year. So the people want Larry Cam. Larry Cam, there you go. Oh, it's all out of focus. There we go. It's wonky. <laughs> and we got some special guests with us this week. Um, of course, uh, as advertised, Mambo Italiano joins us here. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Hi. I'm happy to be here and talk with you guys today. Awesome. I hope we will have a great time together. It's great to have a real Italian on the show. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm so sorry about we have another guest tonight. Calvin Couture. We do have he Calvin. Think I'm not able to do an interview by myself okay. because my English is not good. So we will see if I'm reason or he have reason. So I think it's all right. I uh, think we'll, we'll do all right. I don't understand Mambo. I don't understand him too, but so I, I still don't know why we are friends. So it's still weird. Well, you guys team together. You're Golden Sheik uh, 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 with a couple other gents. Yes, this is the reason why his career is start to grow up after he oh. teamed with me with the real Italian. Wait, are you saying you're the Miz and he's the Miz Raj? Should be. Should yeah? be. Yeah. Should be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, off to a fun start here. But thank you, Calvin, for joining us once again. Yeah. Obviously, you're welcome, Sork. You're welcome. Thank you. I smell a little bit of jealousy from this this side of the couch over here. I don't know, but it's okay. It's pizza. He's uh, that, that, that's pizza. exactly what that is. He's, he is jealousy because he don't have this less of pizza, and I have this less of pizza with me. So this is his jealousy. This is what he smells. This, there you go. This less of pizza. There you go. And by the way, the sparkly tie is in full effect, if you're wondering on the audio. <laughs> <laughs> Always, you gotta have a little bit of sparkle. Come on now, Sheikah sequins over here. Let's let's get this made. There you go. Hey, we, 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 you know there is running for best dress for 2018 Mayhemis. So you know, 
Got to get it going. Opportunity. It's, it's a very hotly contested category. It is. It is. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but anyways, uh, and I think I got everybody. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, as well as video versions on YouTube and the Facebook page, WrestlingMayhemShow.com for this and other shows. Also, check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Master Feed, where a lot of the all of the wrestling happens, uh, including the Indie Mayhem Show, the Raw Wrap-Up, and a few other things here and there we may be experimenting with. And, of course, you can drop us a line to that email address. Good times. Good times at SorgatronMedia.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. A lot of activities happening there. Get to interact with you guys. As well as over at the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. A lot of great discussions there. Definitely inspiring uh, a lot of that we're doing on the show. And you can join us here every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. And thanks to our friends at the 405 Media streaming us out there on the West Coast. Uh, and, of course, they replay the shows nightly at midnight uh, Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific Time. So, you know, you can doze off to the sweet sounds of mayhem. And also, thank you to our friends that have been supporting us on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show, literally helping keep the, keep the lights on here in Sorgatron Media Studio. Uh, at the fan of the show, $1 level, shout-outs to our friends, Bo Diggity! Woo! Mm-hmm. Woo! And of course, Ed Burke, Bobby F. J-Town, Tina Keys, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Better- Betterment, and at the Pocky Club $5 level, Occupy Pro Wrestling, as power to the smarks on the Twitter, Mad Mike, for the rest of the month. For the rest of the month, at least. As, Unless as we give him another normal. reason to stay on as outside of normal. Mayhem Mania. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if there's something else that's going on, I mean, Mayhem Mania is usually when I donate, so I got to get those sweet, sweet matches in. There might be some other reasons coming very, very soon. Christopher Bishop, uh, Heel Bradley, thank you for supporting the show. And newly, he has not been on the show for a little bit, but still back to support... The OG Mayhemer, Doc Remedy, joining us. Mm. I think the only one on my list that at one time was a pro wrestler, officially. So he gets that distinction, too. Uh, also at the Pizza Club, $10 level, our friend Billy Johnson and J.D. Jones. You can check out all the levels, including perks, including the uh, $20 level, where uh, you'll get a free digital download from IndieWrestling.us. And we have a few other things that we're working out the details on. And we're hoping to announce for the, I think, May month I'm targeting right now. And I'm going to give you guys a heads up on the state of the show uh, at the $10 level, what that is that we have uh, worked up. Uh, giving guys reasons to... You know, we've had such a great one. This is, I think, officially, this has been the biggest month of Patreons that we've had since we started doing Patreon. So uh, we just want to give you guys uh, more reason to contribute to the show and be a part of it and interact with the show as well, of course, with the highly successful uh, Patreon in the bank with Mayhem Mania. So uh, this past week, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> we had... Excuse me. Ah, wow. <coughs> I just lost my Back voice. Em. I don't know where my No, Razor. 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 Um, day. All right. Now the show's going off the rails. Um, early. I was but letting you catch your breath, Sword. I want to give a shout because this this is kind of mainstream yet indie at the same time. We had uh, several of us here that were a part of it. You're going to see in the next couple of weeks, um, uh, you know, we usually do backstage interviews at, at Meadville for the Night of the Superstars. Um, in the past, we've talked to Booker T, Scott Hall. We didn't get a chance to talk to the Ray Mysterios and Mark Henrys so much, but Katie Dutters is um, <laughs> had some conversations with some friends at IWC. They missed you guys. They, they, did, you, did you guys not come around? Yeah, you, you 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 walked by a lot. I saw in the footage. They big leagued him. I I mean, I was there. No, they no, could... they got big league. They actually did talk to big league. Oh, did they? Yes. Oh. Missy was cameraing. We had a moment with Calvin. You did have a moment. There was we a did, moment. We did have a great moment with Calvin. And we didn't want to have an interview with the two of them because we knew Mambo was coming in this week. That's right. Here I am. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but it was a fantastic show. Again, filling Mead- Meadville's uh, uh, gymnasium. It was for a good cause. It was great to see Rey Mysterio in action. Uh, of course, you guys were involved in the, uh, I think, were you guys were in the Mark Henry Battle Royal, yes. I believe? The world's yes. strongest yeah. battle royal. World's strongest battle royal. 
And it was it was fun. Mark Henry came out and watching him just uh, uh, react to the battle royal. I know we got a few shots of it over there. I know I know McChesney said he had a lot of fun hanging with them as, as well. Um, you know, do you guys have some good experience from that being around all those superstars like that? Rikishi was there as well. Jack Swagger in a fantastic match with uh, Jack Pollock, of course. Um, uh, do you guys got any, any interesting experiences to share from the weekend? For me, it was uh, the first night of Superstar and was a really awesome experience. Shared the the locker room with a lot of WWE legends and mm-hmm. other super cool wrestlers. So for me, it was really fun, especially Mark Carey. Mm-hmm. I won't say a note on him. He, he told us a lot of good feedback about every match and what how we can improve in something. So it was really, really, really good experience. Awesome. Awesome. What about you, Calvin? I had a cool interaction with Jack Swagger, actually. Um, he kind of liked what I was going for with the uh, the whole Katie Arquette shirt, because that was actually the shirt that she wore winning that match. So is I, it, I is, figured... Is this the, the, the belly shirt oh, kind of, of picture that was going around? Of course. Yeah. So I was like, you know, if she won wearing that shirt, obviously I was going to win wearing that shirt, right? But I guess that didn't pan out in my favor. Um, however, I had a cool interaction with, um, Jack before he actually went out with his, uh, before his match, um, just kind of cool in passing, like, you know, just one of those experiences that's like, oh, hey, how are you? And just chatting real quick. And then literally went right out to wrestle with Pollock. So it was just kind of neat. So professional of mm-hmm. him just, uh, cause he could be in the zone and, be going over his match, but he took the time to talk to just somebody walking by. I think so. we talked about the Indy on an Indy Mayhem show, but you last year got to drive in Ricky Steamboat to mm-hmm. there was a wheeling show before Night of the Superstars. So you gotta have an hour under the learning tree with uh Ricky. It's actually a little bit longer than an hour, Sorg. So um that evening I drove him into Wheeling mm-hmm. and then the next day I actually had brunch with him at the casino. Nice. And then I actually drove him to the airport so he get his rental car because I think he had a show that Sunday. Mm-hmm. So it was really it was a really cool experience with That's him. Great. Yeah. I did see I did see uh um Tyler uh, the, the the fire resident firefighter on IWC uh oh, drove true, in True Heroes. True Heroes. Jason yes. Tyler, Jason yeah. Jason Tyler, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Um, how did how did that GoFundMe go for you? Sorry. It didn't go very far. Oh, no, okay. we we're trying to fix his his misspelled tights. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I I saw that he he drove in Mark Henry. Yeah. So uh, so it was fun. I got to shake shake Mark Henry's fan hand. He, he seemed he seemed the most pleasant of them. Uh, and it, uh, you know, it's awesome being the guy that was just inducted in the Hall of Fame just a, a week ago. Definitely. You know, so uh, always a really cool event to see there and and, and the mix of people. Also, good to see DJ Z. DJ Z is super big league and gets the curtain with everybody else, apparently. So, hanging out with uh, Chelsea Green, I know. Uh, so, uh, always always a really fun event. Uh, that will be available, of course, this week on IndieWrestling.us if you guys want to check that out, too. So, so the big news is the Superstar shape, Shake Up, which is still going on as we speak by the way it's about 20 after nine on the uh east coast here and uh we we talked about extensively the raw shake up last night yeah and uh there's been some updates so what has happened so far on smackdown as of as we go to press time here uh, as far as shakeups we've had uh jeff hardy come out after he recently he uh just won the united states title on raw yesterday and brought the title with him brought the title back to smackdown uh, and then uh, Samoa Joe came and beat up uh, Sin Cara. And uh, Big, Sin Cara. Big Cass is back. Yeah, so. Sin Cara, who hasn't been on television for months. And like, hey, Sin Cara is still here. And here's Samoa Joe to ruin the party. Yep. Um, he's not part of the Lucha House party. Nope. And and Bobby said so. there's a sanity <laughs> promo video. There's a sanity promo video. Ooh, I did that, not see that's that. What Bobby said I didn't see that. I missed Ooh, that. Ooh, it makes sense. They've been kind of not doing much. I'm hoping it's all of them. I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I would imagine it's all of them if it's. But uh, oh, again, this is giving me TNA PST, PTSD because Eric Young. Yeah. No, because you have Samoa Joe, Eric Young, Jeff Hardy holding a title, and and AJ Styles. <laughs> I'm telling you, Josh, Josh Matthews is coming back to commentating. And it's very blue. Oh, I, I will murder. I will murder anyone involved if Josh Matthews comes back to commentate. I would rather have Jeremy Borash. Who got Corey Graves? He's on both. He's on both. Oh, okay. Yeah, so He's still on both. So no switch? No. Okay. No. 
They're not switching commentators. Although hearing Corey Graves shut down Josh Matthews might be really, really funny. Oh, geez, that'd be good. <laughs> him tearing into him? Yeah, that'd be that'd be a lot. That of might fun. be really, really funny. So maybe I'll maybe I'll withhold the murder. Uh, yeah, uh, Dave's uh, confirming the sanity video. Uh, Bobby of J Town says debuting soon. Um, yeah, <laughs> BK Broiler is running wild. I what is that a reference to? That's familiar to me. No, I, I, I swear no. that's one of your midweek war things. Billy so, K. Oh, Billy K. Yeah, the iconic Billy duo. K. Probably. So, because it, it's Billy K versus Charlotte right now. So it's an inter- so we're doing yeah you know, we're doing that thing again where uh, oh hey this person showed up and, and won the title now they're over on this show we have a few matches coming up in the greatest Royal Rumble we were talking about before the show that are have implications of well what 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 show does this belt end up on right and everything always seems to kind of level out afterwards right. Um, I still think the IC title ends up on Miz. You think it ends up on Miz on SmackDown? I still think it does. I think it has to. Mm -hmm. Because Jeff can lose right back to Jinder Mahal again, and it doesn't mean anything for Jeff. Right. Jeff would be more suited to go for the WWE title anyway. This is the run so Jeff can get his Hell in a Cell match that he wants. Has to be, right? Oh, actually, yeah. Jeff Hardy, Hell in a Cell versus AJ Styles for a WWE title? There you go. Sure, sure. Sign me up for that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that sounds fun um but but i mean it's a little different this year because we do like we're back to everybody doing the pay-per-views together uh greatest royal rumble things like that is it is it do you guys think it's as big a deal this this shake up this year i i personally didn't like how they brought a lot of people in the two shows after mania and then like just kidding here's the shake up yeah that was yeah, kind of yeah. pointless i mean i get it i get why they did it but i was just like eh. Like, so it's like too much new right, right. yeah right because you're basically it it, it 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 like all the shows are kind of i don't know completely different after a couple weeks it's kind of it's nice seeing people face different people you know that are on other shows mm-hmm. like i'd like to see Samoa Joe face i don't know Shinsuke. I was gonna say Baron Corbin, but he's not in Raw now. Um, but you, you get my point. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's something new, you know. Raw and SmackDown tend to get redundant after a while with the tag matches, right? Um, the biggest thing that I noticed, and, and I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of using um, Sammy and KO as a uh, Kevin Owens as a barometer here, but it, it, like we have a like a logical end to storylines now at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, of course, there's some stuff that's just starting, like like AJ and Nakamura. We're probably going to see for a while, right? Yes. And uh, you know, but we, you know, the whole Shane, Daniel Bryan, and Sammy and and Kevin Owens is over, yeah. for the most part. Like there, there's a new chapter, and it was like a very like I can't remember the last time there was a very clear kind of turnover of things like that. And there's several things that feel like they've they've kind of hit that. You know, Carmella yeah. winning the belt, things like that. Yeah. And now they've gone from a McMahon they hate to a McMahon they love. Because because Kevin is on good terms with Stephanie. Oh. That is true. That is true. But not but not Angle. So I, yeah, I if, so I mean we're still getting the authority figure. Yeah, yeah. So um and of course there'll be a few more. There'll be a few more we get. We we had the big cleanup of like, hey, here's all the people on main event that got <laughs> kind of pushed over last last night. Um, and I, I don't even like a uh, Mojo Raleigh came over, right? You know, guys like that, which you know they'll be in the mix somewhere, and, I guess. And if you look after, like on the WWE social media after Raw, there were still more moves, like the Colognes to mm-hmm. Raw, Mojo Raleigh, Mojo Raleigh, and Zack Ryder to Raw, and Chad Gable to Raw, mm-hmm. like. And I think the uh, the ascensions on Raw too now. Yeah, the ascensions on Raw. What is this? Yeah. Is, is Asuka officially? Asuka's on SmackDown. On SmackDown, Asuka's, and she's running Asuka's down to. Official. Yep. It makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, she just she just kicked off Billy Kay's head. <laughs> dead. Aww. And actually, dead. I think SmackDown is now, with the exception of Naomi, comprised entirely of people who made their debut on NXT, mm-hmm. the women's division, anyway. Um, yeah, Matt Carlin. I think Tamina's on there still. Or I'm sorry, Bobby F. J. Town 
uh, was saying, I just want them to switch everyone in each brand. Like, like everyone from SmackDown comes to Raw and vice versa. I don't want to see that because you're seeing it, the same I, I, Yeah, but... The, but with a different creative team, that's kind of a Not more really. It, the same it'd probably be a more part. efficient show to just say who's staying. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. that's not. That's actually a, a good call. <laughs> yeah. Like, like if if Kurt Angle came out Monday, like, all right, guys, the Shield isn't going anywhere. <laughs> is this gonna be like Survivor, Survivor where Miserage. he's like snuffing out torches? I'm I'm not sure. I, yeah, it, I've always been iffy about this whole like. Oh, oh. there's no explanation, right, about oh, who's coming where. Yeah. We got some good brothers going to SmackDown. Oh, really? We got some good brothers going to SmackDown. Spoiler alert, Mike. Bobby just said in the chat room. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, that's fine for the fine. purposes of this show, at least. And of for course, per- we're reporting on the shakeup. I am reporting what's being shooken up. Speaking of reporting the shakeup, I think they need like a summary show. <laughs> <laughs> like just like like the bracketology show like like just like any draft they're just like okay this is what happened what's gonna happen you know something like that where the, i feel like renee young could really get or at least post it on the network it. where like there's exactly a visual, visual chart they didn't even have that for the tournaments i make, don't think make no. it like espn you know? you know like make it a bigger deal than it is because i mean they, they were making it a huge deal last week and then yeah. it's just like now they're doing it it's just like man people will follow it more if they have something right. to look at all they all they really need is Kurt and Paige in a war room, like talking to each other, like who's going where. Oh, wouldn't you want to hear those negotiations? I would love to hear like Daniel Bryan saying, "Hey, Shane, Paige, can you do a brother a solid and bring the Miz over? <laughs> Just the Miz, though. Just the Miz. Like that. That's a fun segment that we could have gotten, and." It's just, I don't know. That'd be a good thing for like Sunday Night Heat. Mm. Yeah. If that was still a thing, they should bring Sunday Night Heat just as a or thing. Even, or the- even a raw pre-show. Like a half hour pre-show for the shake-up shows. Mm-hmm. That's all you need. Uh, it, can, it can be pre-produced. I mean, they know who's going where. So, mm-hmm. uh, Mambo, have you been keeping up on the shake-up here? Have you, a- anything that's been interesting to you? What? I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll probably break in with some other news as things develop here on SmackDown here. Uh, but we want to give a shout out to our friends that have been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting for the pep- perfect pepperoni pizza slice on Broadway. Uh, like I said, they've been supporting uh, our podcast here, uh, including the Wrestling Man Show, for a good long time. The OG, the original, right down the street here. Uh, in Bro- in Broadway Avenue, hence the name Slice on Broadway. If you're wondering where the Broadway was at PNC Park, it's over here in Beachview. Uh, but no, of course, they're over at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Carnegie, uh, down on Main Street there, and of course, the East End, East Liberty. Uh, so in the four corners of town here, you can get your Slice on Broadway on. Uh, thank you so much for them for supporting the show and to help us uh, give some shout outs to our friends. We have a real Italian with us to talk about Slice on Broadway. Yeah. Mambo Italiano. Th- they should invite me to try this pizza, and I can say if it's a real Italian pizza or not. Mm-hmm. So, they- well, you tried some of it. What do you think here? It was good. It was good? Yeah, it was good. It was very Italian? Uh, not really Italian, but <laughs> it's close. <laughs> So, um, but uh, tell the people, tell the people, uh, you know, why they need to be uh, checking out Slice on Broadway from a real Italian. Dovete andare a guardare appunto a provare questa pizza perché sicuramente s- avrà molto da sapere e sarà molto simile alle nostre pizze italiane, quindi potrete andarla a assaggiarla con la vostra famiglia, con i vostri amici, con la vostra ragazza, con chi volete e dire la vostra opinione su questa pizza. Secondo me è stata abbastanza buona. I thought the same thing. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. I've been saying that for months. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Mambo. You're welcome. Chiming yeah. in. Uh, Slice on Broadway. Check them out. SliceonBroadway.com. And thank you again for supporting the show. And if you understood what just happened, please let me know so I know if I need to do an Italian language version of the Wrestling Mayhem show. Possiamo farlo, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, try. exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, ciao. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spaghetti. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. He taught me some Italian. Thank you. Uh, anyway, so I I've been holding this off because. I know, I, I I know you guys are are heartbroken about this. I don't want to bring the show down, right? But and, and I think I think the best um, um, explanation about this was uh, Mikey and Bob uh, <laughs> were talking about um, the the John Cena and Nikki Bella breakup, and and uh, Mike, you're not going to hear this immediately. But uh, but I, I really think they kind of nailed a lot of our emotions going into this. Go ahead. Take a breath, Bob, because you're you're going to need it. It's a lot to take in. I want to start the week with uh, with the news. Uh, that was breaking overnight because I still I almost called off work today. Almost called off work today. I can relate. When you come to the realization that true love is not real, it's hard to wake up and go on with life. Oh, no. And go to your job, go to school, anything. When you know that true love is not a real thing, it's really hard to, it's really hard to carry on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, they have been dating since 2012. He proposed to her one year ago. At WrestleMania oh, 33, God. Oh, God, no. John oh, God, Cena no. and Nikki Bella oh, have broken up, have split up. No! Yeah, I think Bob's got it there. Uh, uh, how we all felt uh, after hearing about that news. And on Rusev Day, on no less. On Rusev Day. You know, and, and by the way, wait, wait, wait. wait we didn't check. Is it? Is it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it? Wait. It's Rusev Day. It's okay. The recover day is still, still Rusev Day. We're all right, guys. Uh, but anyways, what was that, Mike? I, I said I definitely wholeheartedly agree with everything I just heard. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, Nikki and John Cena broke up. I mean, this is I mean, this is the most wrestling relationship story I think we we, we, we have here. Um, but sorry, that doesn't mean love is dead. I, doesn't it? No, sorry, that doesn't mean love is dead. You know how I know this, Sorg? How's that? Because the Miz who got shaken up to SmackDown decided not to show up because he was spending SmackDown celebrating his feud win over John Cena and Nikki Bella with his wife, Maurice, and their beautiful daughter, Monroe Sky. Is that an explanation they actually gave? No, but it's the explanation that is the canon in my head. Who was it? Was it was it you that said that that this is the long game? So like, who had the, the long game of uh, Miz and Maurice? A- it wasn't me. It was uh, Matt Carlin. Was it Matt Carlin's? Like the long game here is that uh, because they couldn't beat uh, them at WrestleMania, Miz and Maurice went and had a child just to stick it to the John and Nikki, since that was the debate. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> oh no. And therefore, oh, no. they won the feud. Guys, our truth is on SmackDown. Oh yes! boy. <laughs> but but so is Cesaro. So <laughs> what? We, so we can get Cesaro versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Wait, Ooh. What? Did they break up the bar? No. I, well, the the bar is on SmackDown. Oh wow. Okay. The whole bar, or just half the bar? The whole the whole bar. The they whole don't, bar. They they don't shake up the bar. They are the bar. No, I don't know if that works so well. Um, but <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> Anyways. Um, you know, if we just moved Randy Orton to Raw, SmackDown would be a perfect show right now. Calvin, you know a little bit about showbiz, showbiz and relationships, right? <laughs> do I sort? Yes. What do you think about this Nikki and John Cena thing? Oh, was it ever meant to be? Honestly, was it ever meant to be? It seemed a little too convenient. I didn't mean, it? not only like, that, like, but like it was very aggressive. I aggressive? feel like I feel like Nikki was very aggressive from the start. Okay. I mean, overall, I think it just wasn't fair for either of them. I think it was bound to not work out. But that's just my personal opinion. It really kind of leans a little bit to the uh, Miz and Maurice uh, fun they did before WrestleMania last right. year. But I mean, think about it. Just a year later, after they get engaged, they break up. Mm-hmm. Like it just—I don't know. Well, I don't know. Is well, it here's here's my thought on it. And we kind of made this joke last year when the proposal was made in the ring at WrestleMania. Oh, 
how many WrestleMania marriages, proposals, et cetera, et cetera, have, have gone so well, or how many wrestling relationships in general have For lasted? Second, Macho Man uh, and Elizabeth, I, I, right? I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna talk about this because I know that there was a video released about uh, what Matt Carlin's and I saw at Access. Mm-hmm. They, they have the whole, they had the whole toy line at Access, and they were they were set to reveal two uh, new sets. That I think we're going to be um, put on, put put out for sale in sometime in the fall, and now I realize they should just call it the Doomed Love line, because one set was Macho Man holding up Miss Elizabeth from WrestleMania Four, and the other set was John Cena proposing to Nikki Bella. <laughs> And they were more like doll <laughs> figures or something, they were, weren't they? They were Barbie yeah. dolls. They, they were like Barbie, Barbie dolls. dolls. They, okay. They were like they were like the uh, the new uh, women superstar line. Jeez. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they could still release that, right? Uh, if even, they were produced, maybe, maybe with maybe with the little uh, like I mean, the millennials love the hashtags these days. You put hashtag awkward on the box. Oh. Okay. Well, here's here's my favorite. And I saw a picture of this and it made me laugh. It was actually when the Miz and Maurice dressed up as John Cena and Nikki Bella. Mm -hmm. And they were in a boxed set together. And that was perfect. Yeah, it was hilarious. I actually, I popped whenever I saw it. Me too. (laughs) So, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what, I mean, We'll, we'll talk about a little bit some ideas around that, but uh, man, at least uh, at least Daniel and and Bree are doing okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got to talk about something important real oh. quick. Um, Andrade Cien Almas is going to SmackDown. <gasps> no, Ooh, here's a with, question with with Zelina Vega. You answered my question. Yep. Sorry. Good, good. He's too good. He, he, he's too good. It's good to see him up there. I love yeah. it. I love it. He, he's yep. awesome. Yeah, I think he's. One of the best in the entire WWE. He's been having, of course, he's had matches with amazing guys like Johnny Gargano. Yeah, I, uh, I, I saw live this match. Yeah, I was uh, in Philly to see my friend, and we went to take over. It was really amazing match. It was really amazing match. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, the crazy lady is not going to SmackDown with Sanity. The though. crazy lady. Yeah, Nikki Cross is not nope. going. Nope. Why don't they do something with her? Because she's been kind of in the background for a, a while now. I, so. I'm I'm kind of glad that she separated from Sandy. Yeah, I I think she she doesn't need Sandy. Sandy needed her. Neither does Killian Dane. Oh, oh <laughs> he's going to be separated out easily at some point there. Actually, I, Killian Dane and um, Alexander Wolf versus Bludgeon Brothers. I'll take mm. that. I'll take that as a match. That sounds like fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so now I mean. Are we shaping up? Is SmackDown still kind of looking like the the good match workhorse show like it used to be? I don't know. They're getting so many people now. I'm wondering if they're going to put a third hour on it. You think? Can we just there's uh, so many people. The 205 there, well, and yeah, there's just so many. But also remember, like we, you know, I, I I come to wonder if they're they're all the general pay per views are now going to be four hours because there's right. so many people. Yeah, on but, they're, but they're but yeah. they're they are they are, they are officially going to be four hours. They're all co branded sure though. They're all so co branded. So you have to put half of that is raw because typically they would squeeze. You know, it would be, just be like, hey, here's three hours of championship matches from both shows. And maybe, you know, that's how we got like, hey, the tag team championship hasn't been defended on a pay-per-view for six months because we don't have room for it. Now you have to do four hours of championship matches for two shows. Yeah. You're gaining one extra We have way more belts than we used to. We have way more belts than we used to. Which doesn't mean a lot for the, what, 15 to 20 other superstars that don't have a title match. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where are the stories? The pre-show is going to be four hours long also. Yeah. I just feel bad for the cruiserweights. So, so we're not at the point because I, I, I think I haven't looked deeply at the schedule, but we're back to one show a month, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, more or yeah. less. More or less. So I now I think what's going to happen. Like, this, this is a theory I've been working on in the last week. So yeah, if you're yeah, or if you're in Saudi Arabia, an eighty-hour show because holy crap, there's a lot of matches on that thing. We'll talk about the Saudi Arabia show probably next week. 
Um, we are going to have a party here because apparently people are taking off work to watch this thing in the afternoon next Friday. Wow. So we're going to host a party here for that. So I, I actually took off because Avengers is that night. So it's just a happy accident. Oh, for me. man. <laughs> we got the greatest Royal Rumble and the Avengers on the same day. Yeah, I actually That's think impossible. I think I'm just going to have dreams that night of Samoa Joe punching Thanos in the face. <laughs> Uh, very possible. So, so and then I, Thanos giving him a stunner. I feel like more than hey, we need to bring it back together because it's stale or something. Because I didn't really think the brand pay per views were stale. I feel like we've barely done them for two years, right? Yeah. And I think this is the make way for more things like the Saudi Arabia show. I don't know what? if that. I don't think the new things are going to be like that. Well, well, Mike, we're that talking... Saudi Arabia show is got some. Serious no, I don't think. Now, it. yeah, I don't think we're going to see a Saudi Arabia great fifty man Royal Rumble plus ten other matches situation. But I think it stands to reason. We were talking, Mike. Were you still on last night? We were talking off air about um, what other countries they're making a really big push into lately. Yeah. I also. Why are they not calling this Saudi Amania? It kind of is, right? Saudi Mania. I mean, it writes itself. How amazing is that going to look if they drop into a Saudi Arabia in India? A, uh, you know, maybe they'll get to take the Tokyo Dome, right? And do one big card for the country every year. They're doing the King of the Ring tournament in, for the UK. Are they? The UK tournament's for King of the Ring. Are they going to do it yes. at Wembley? It's a, it's a, <laughs> no, it's in the same place. It's a one night only thing, though. It's a one night only. Yeah. Is, is it going to yeah, be? Yeah, I think it's at like the Royal Albert Hall. Royal... Oh, I okay. Say it. That's where it is. Okay, so that could be fun. Yeah. But like, like this idea that maybe every two to three months they basically have a WrestleMania with like a sixty thousand, you know, football field, like they're doing Saudi Arabia, you know, in a different country. Well, I mean, didn't they? That's kind of like going back to the main pay per views that they did in the 90s i mean it's kind of like similar right mm -hmm. it's making a bigger feel like it used to be so they can expand that out and keep it interesting and have have a bigger stage like mm -hmm. on a regular basis they can't do wrestlemania with eighty thousand people every month here right but sure. we're doing the royal rumble at a ball field which is probably going to get what forty thousand people thirty thousand people mm -hmm. maybe uh next year they did almo dome a couple years ago um you know they want that big like hey we come in and do our show take over a town more than just for once a year like new orleans right yeah. and that you know makes it makes them bigger it makes the, the the tickets better you know for everybody coming in um they're evolving yeah it, it really is and this you know, I mean we we've talked about it, you know mayhem mania this is the deepest roster of talent like, there's not a lot of slouches on there. I mean, it's literally everybody that we love watching on the indies working their asses off at whatever level they're at, right? And, and, and it's it, a who's who. It is kind of like Infinity War. It is the Infinity War like, like, like if you look of at, WWE. If you look, at, if you look at the, like, Guardians is Ring of Honor. Like, <laughs> the, the Wakanda, let's call that New Japan. Like, everything is just collapsing together into one big amalgam. <laughs> well, here's here's the fun thing that Brandon in the chat room actually points out is that as stocked as the card is for that Saudi Arabia show, there are no women on that match because of where they are. And yet it's still going to be a huge Yeah, and, and again card. and again that's saying, you know, just like how what in India I, was a big deal that they did have a match, right? I mean, they're they're not going to. I think it's also that, was that in, big uh, of a card. Because they can't put women's matches on there. That was yeah. an Abu Dhabi. They, like, like they're defending yeah, every Dhabi. title. They're defending every title because they can't have two women's title matches. And and I wouldn't, because I, I think there was some discussion somewhere on the group about like, well, they should be they should be pushing the envelope, right? It's like, no, this is like a law there, and there's only certain things you can do. Like, I mean, and I think I think it opens doors, like in Abu Dhabi, where they did that that women's match. Um, you know, seeing those happen, you know, across the border and then they're making a foothold. Maybe they do change, but I think it's okay that this show is not it, right? Uh, also, it's a business, guys. They're going to make the business decisions. Um, we can have a big conversation about technology companies and how they're trading <laughs> laws in China. Uh, that's all, but that's another podcast we do here on the Sorgatron Media Network. Uh, but anyways... <laughs> <laughs> but uh no yeah yeah and, and tina's saying uh yeah uh summer slam 92 was in wembley stadium that's why that kind of popped in my mind 
uh, for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, they did that have NXT a, TakeOver a London, so uh, there could also be a Japan event, too. I can see that for I can take, see that can starting see that to go around. NXT. Yeah. Well, I, they did. They, did um, the, they televised that one Brock Lesnar in Japan. Yeah, in um, Sumo Hall. Yeah. Poor Kofi. Poor Kofi. <laughs> <laughs> Poor pre New Day Kofi Kingston. So no, he was in the New Day at that time. No, he was in the New Day then. Oh, was he? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. but the New Day wasn't like they didn't the New Let, Day. Let's yet. just say yeah. throwing no, pancakes at Brock Lesnar does not really affect him that much. Nope. Maybe unless he's hungry. Unless he's hungry. Well, it might affect his diverticulitis. Oh, mm. oh, that's how you beat Brock Lesnar. Gluten. Kick him in the <laughs> diverticulitis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just just feed him gluten. Just feed him gluten. Jeez. Well, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Like I said, we'll talk a good bit about um, this, uh, uh, you know, whatever other fallout from the Superstar Shake-Up, as well as the greatest Royal Rumble uh, next week uh, leading did, into when that. When did Jeff Hardy get clearance to travel to Saudi Arabia? Yeah, you would think with his I, record. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think. <laughs> did I he didn't have think a, he was allowed to go to Canada, let alone Saudi Arabia. Didn't Jeff Hardy like legitimately have a drug trafficking charge? Did he beat no, that? That was X Pac. That was X Pac. He had that too. He you, got, yeah, he, yeah, he, he got, got know, detained. Or I think it's happy. You know, X Pac's coming to town. No, I didn't. Know He's going to be doing a meeting in Bethel Park, right down the road, practically. Huh. Uh, it's a it's a drug addiction. Um, meeting that he's presenting I I at. Saw that. yeah so like of course he's had his issues right so like part of me wants to go see it I, I do have a client that works in drug addiction so i have a legitimate reason outside of wrestling but i also kind of want to go to see and see how many just wrestling fans show up unfortunately okay. you know <laughs> just yeah, the, X- so, by the way if you're just I, a wrestling fan X-Pac that wants free. if you're just a wrestling fan that wants to see x Pac, this is probably not the way yeah. to do it Okay, but if you have a drug problem, one, please go get help, and uh, two, uh, uh, it might be for you. So I hope Xbox brings his service dog with him. Oh my God, that oh, dog is the, the greatest dog? thing in the world. If you didn't see the twenty four seven or the WWE twenty four on the Raw twenty five episode, Xbox shows up with his dog, like the he's got it in a the baby front carrier, baby carrier I thing. Think I saw it with the dog, and I'm like, and the dog's got his tongue hanging out, and then. <laughs> And then, and then, well, who, who was he? He was, he was talking with Taker. Was he talking, he was with, talking, Taker? He was talking with Taker? Yeah, he's talking with Undertaker, who's, this is like the first thing where Undertaker has been like completely out of character for the entire thing, right? And he's talking about how, like, yeah, I found this dog. His jaw was broken, and I've been taking care of him. So his jaw, and that's he, why he just has his mouth open all the time. Yeah. Did he say the dog's name? Because I really hope it's just six. Well, I don't did. think it is, I and think I he think did he did say what it yeah, was, but yeah. it wasn't that. It is not that. I, I wish it was like six or lightning or di- like one of the names he had before he was X Pac. <laughs> Kid. Two four six. Oh. Two four six. <laughs> exactly. Uh. Ba- back to the Saudi Arabia thing. Mm-hmm. I am curious to see how all those super superstars handle working in a very very dry country. That's right, because you spent six weeks in Saudi Arabia. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. I was in Dubai. You were in Dubai. That, that is Saudi not Saudi Arabia. Arabia. They have you were alcohol. Saudi Arabia adjacent. Yeah. That's okay. People go. People go from Saudi Arabia to Dubai to like let loose. <laughs> oh yeah. No, wow. really, because oh. it's so like strict there. Okay. Yeah. And we're gonna have pro wrestling there. Yeah. Didn't they used to do like the like the Kuwait Cup back in like yeah. the nineties yeah. and WWE? stuff like that? Yeah. Really? Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, Tiger that, Ali that, Singh won the tournament. That place one is year. also pretty liberal. I thought yeah. Ahmed Johnson won it one year too. Yeah, I think they did two tournaments, Jeez. from what I remember. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't, I don't know why I know that, but <laughs> also Riz is a jerk for uh, posting uh, kayfabe news on the Wrestling Mayhem show page, oh, saying that... the greatest Kali and the greatest Muda were going to be at the greatest Royal Rumble. Yes, I was mm-hmm. really, really mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was very excited for half a second, and then I saw it said greatest on both of them. Like, oh, yeah. I have some news. You have some news. Ooh. Missy has some news. X Pac's dog's name is Lula. Oh, Lula. Oh. That seems okay. like something he would name a dog. Maybe. Uh, sure. I feel like uh, that was already the dog's name. It probably had a collar. He yeah, probably just stole it. Had a collar. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you steal somebody's dog there? Well, we're here. Calvin Couture is here hanging out. Let's Mambo go. Italiano. Here I am, baby. Yes. <laughs> 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 we're going to talk about love a little bit here. Uh, after the show, or I'm sorry, after the break as well. Larry, Mad Mike. What? What? 
A little bit of love. A little bit of love. A little bit post-love. We're going to talk about post-love. Take that how you will. You got a few minutes to figure that out. And of course, producer Missy keeping it all together. Kind of pretending she's keeping it all together. Oh. No, no, that's me. That's yes. me, actually. Yes. Yes. She's yes. keeping it all You're together. You're the one pretending. She's the one actually doing if it. If you want to be a uh, part of this mayhem, Hashtag Brock and get your message out there. Hit us up. Looking for some great advertising options that won't break the bank. Advertise with us, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, or our other fine members here on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. New uh, new guys ca- popping on all the time. I saw that our, our buddy Toddy is going to be joining us um, a few weeks from now on a thrifty podcast. Just joined our network. A um, lot of options. A lot of great audiences for you to get your uh, uh, word and name and, and whatever you need to get out there in front of info at sorgatronmedia.com and uh, producer Missy will take care of you and we'll get your message out for you thank you so much for everybody that does support the show like Slice on Broadway like Alex Cars uh, in those ways uh, and of course our friends at the Patreon given there uh, so we can keep doing the show and literally keep the lights on between all of you guys there so yes yes producer Missy speaking of uh Toddy Tondera. Mm-hmm. He's in the chat room. Ooh. And he's excited to see Sanity on SmackDown. There you go. One big family hanging out here on Tuesday nights, chatting wrestling. Um, he has a very wrestling uh, oriented picture. I appreciate it. It had some of the cool old school figures uh, going on there. We got, I want to go thrifting with him soon. I'm just going to look for wrestling figures, I think. Wrestling figures and video games. That pretty much nails it for me so uh we'll see what else fun stuff we can find in here in the studio uh but we'll be back after this message with the big question sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com we are back it's the wrestling mayhem show mike sorg here sorgatron Uh, we got uh everybody in the studio of course we got Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York. The only one on the Mayhem Show with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. That is true. And uh, maybe in the future, Toys R Us as well. <laughs> hey, no. Yeah, that, that one's going to be entirely voluntary. All right, all right. Of course, Larry's hanging out. What's up? Now over in the, in the producer Missy compound. Yes. Yes. George Washington is not here. But, uh, what? <laughs> we have snacks. George so Washington? Cool. You yeah. mean the, is, the giraffe? The giraffe. Is, the there, Matt Hardy is there a water cooler of regeneration? There mm. is a there Wendy's cup of regeneration. There you go. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> and of course, our guest Mambo Italiano is here. Ciao tutti. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What he said. And Calvin Couture. Hanging going out on. as well. You're welcome. You're welcome. And of course, we, we actually had a kind of a side conversation I wanted to bring back into the main show. We're going to postpone the big question for just a moment. But we were talking about Impact Wrestling. And you had some opinions, Calvin, on it. And Mike, I know you just saw Impact versus TNA. I'm sorry. I did. Impact versus Lucha. Impact versus TNA is kind of every week on Impact. <laughs> um, but anyways... I uh, wait, but let's. I want to get your thoughts, uh, Mike. I, we know where you come from. Usually, it's been it, it mentioned several times. I want to see if there's any updates that I've seen in that show last week. But Calvin, you 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 had some thoughts on on uh, Im- Impact, not TNA anymore, of course. Yeah, I mean, I just like how they use different types of wrestlers today. I mean, you don't see that too often. You see a lot of places using cookie cutter, and while they do have their cookie cutter. They really do a good job at bringing in different talent from Mm -hmm. different promotions, different backgrounds, different countries. And I think that really sets them apart. And I think people kind of worry too much about, oh, well, their stories are kind of strange or, you know, they kind of do this and they kind of do that. But I appreciate that for what it is because, you know, you don't see a lot of differentiation and uniqueness in wrestling. And and if you do, it's not on a big stage like that. So that's why I really appreciate Impact is to see the the different types of wrestlers that are coming in and really showing showcasing their talents and their skills. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys say you wouldn't. Like, I, I think that mold's been broken these days, but a lot of guys say you wouldn't expect on WWE, right? right. Um, you know, it, it's cool. Like we have like uh, Callahan and the Chris brothers right. on there now. What you get, you know, we know from the area. And how cool is that? Yeah, people from the area on a big platform like that. It's mm-hmm. It's, but, it's wild. I I mean, it's kind of the same thing that WWE has been doing over the past couple of years, too. Because if you look at WWE's main roster, half of the guys 
were not made in WWE. No. Like, they weren't even made in NXT. You got people who were made in New Japan, people who were made in Ring of Honor, people who were made in Impact. Like, it's just all the all these bigger, smaller feds, if that makes sense, have been the feeding ground for WWE. So now Impact is taking from even more regional stuff and pulling those people in. Mm-hmm. Partly, be, partly because of contractual reasons, but also because they do want to diversify their product a little bit more. Like, th- there's a reason they wanted to call it global, global championship wrestling. Right. Like, they wanted to bring in a bunch of people, like your Dragos and your Aero Stars and your Sammy Callahan's and the Chris Brothers, like you said. But and I mean, the talent they're bringing in is fantastic. Like, they brought in Brian Cage. I love me some Brian Cage. Like, they're the people they're bringing in is great. But if, if you want to see a show for cohesive storylines and stuff like that, which there are a lot of people who the wrestling is sometimes secondary to them and they want the story to go along with the action, that's where Impact does kind of falter a little bit. Mm-hmm. I do agree. But, you know, do you think if EC3 didn't have Impact to kind of you know, revamp himself, would he have gotten back to WWE? Like, I I think I I definitely agree with you. It's definitely that, you know, that place where people can really go and enhance their skills. Um, But I think if there wasn't an impact, you wouldn't see some stars back in WWE that were there previously. I don't know. I I, I think they could have, I I think they could have done that in ring of honor or in new Japan. Yeah. I think, I think EC3 as a member of the uh, bullet club, EC Derek Bateman as a member of the Bullet Club, I think could have done just as well as EC3 did in Impact Wrestling. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. I disagree. I think EC3 is better by himself than in a in a group. But yeah. that's just me personally. He sticks out. He, he has a strong personality, right? I mean, while Cody's part of Bullet Club, like he's a he, 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 he I think that's a different case. He's very similar to yeah. Cody though, because Cody also stands out as a single person as a mm-hmm. non faction. Yeah, yeah. And now wrestler. he's and, you know, and I think there is a you know, those are guys that either didn't work into the system or had enough of the system. And, you know, they obviously get a little bit more creativity, freedom, work with different minds on things, you know, between the, the people backstage of Impact or Ring of Honor, right? Uh, or even uh, New Japan, right? right. I yeah. mean, look at, look, at, look at Juice Robinson. Right. Holy yeah. crap, is he a different mean, guy than CJ Parker? It also depends how way. much creative license that the that the individual themselves get because like the only reason we're even talking about matt and jeff hardy in 2018 is because impact just gave them a drone and jeremy borash and said film whatever you want right we'll yeah put it on tv i i say also throw credit to dave logano as a part of that uh, as well as far as the uh, ultimate deletions and everything that they have there so yeah, like, i mean there was a lot like, again so some creative minds with the right you know leash off of it like you look at the xwwe guys doing lucha underground you know it was like you know what what did chris say to us on this show chris joseph said like we were writing it as if it was the last wrestling show we would ever write right like they just throwing all the ideas and all the energy into all these concepts and world building on something like that yeah i mean look at at how they've transformed guys like chavo guys Mm -hmm. like john morrison like chavo was the reason that I decided we needed to do a podcast on Lucha Underground because he just blasted Sexy Star in the face with a chair. And I'm like, Chavo's the biggest heel in wrestling. Hey, something interesting is happening here, right? And, and it is interesting. So they're using this Twitch platform, of course. And, of course, they probably have a deal with Twitch to bring attention of wrestling fans to the Twitch platform, which I think has worked. Um, and, of course, we're experimenting with it on indie wrestling, uh, dot US channel, which is streaming even right now an IWC show. Uh, and, and I think it, it, I think impact wrestling has had a problem that I've had with indie wrestling. We got all this content. There's good stuff happening, but nobody knows about it. Impact wrestling obviously is very different than it was three years ago when we're all like, Oh, impact is so bad. Right. I mean, at least you you knew about it. Yeah. But at least you knew it was a thing. Now they've been so buried with pop TV deals and bad news and, and the owl memes and, and all these other things. And, and by putting themselves out the way they are on the space TVs and the Twitches for free or doing this Lucha versus impact wrestling thing that Mike attended and it was on Twitch that re exposes everybody. It was like, Hey guys, this is what impact wrestling is now. Maybe you'd like this version of impact wrestling and throw away all that old stuff, but I'm still, of course, leaning on that history with like their DVDs and everything. 
I don't know if necessarily the Impact versus Lucha show is the best platform for them to say, hey, this is us now, especially when the show opened with a lot of chance of Impact sucked. <laughs> and, <laughs> True. And fuck, that, and fuck that owl. True. Like, well, that's I mean, okay, the, though, because then you you can just you pick, between, somewhere. You can pick between brands. Uh, and, also, you know? and also, I mean, they like weren't they, afraid. They weren't but, afraid to get in front of a live crowd where they knew that would happen. But they also... They're... That show that they had at WrestleCon was originally just going to be an impact show and it was not selling. Mm -hmm. And then they and then they got the idea to co brand of Lucha Underground and that's when tickets still started smart. Flying. Still, still smart. Still you, smart. Yeah. You heard more about that uh over WrestleMania weekend than you did about Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't that's true. I that's can't true, remember yeah. hearing anything about Ring of Honor. Well, it also had it also had the less competition. Because Impact vs. Lucha was going up against the Hall of Fame. And the only thing we learned from the Hall of Fame is Mark Henry is awesome and Hillbilly Jim needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> ROH was going against NXT TakeOver, which may have been the best TakeOver that they've ever done. True. I agree. I agree that's with not that. Hyper that's not hyperbole because I was there. Mm -hmm. it, it's just top to bottom. It was an amazing biggest, show. I believe biggest audience for a TakeOver that they've yeah, ever done. So. I think so, yeah. um, sold out arena and all that stuff. But all right, let's get to the big question here. Obviously, we talked a little bit about Nikki and Cena, and I think we have uh, some ideas because some of us may have shamelessly or shamefully watched Total Be Bellas or Total Divas at some point in our lives. It is on all the time if you turn on the WWE Network feed, of course. So <laughs> I have the question for you, and maybe briefly, book the rebound. For Nikki and John Cena. Oh, we have to book a rebound? Book the rebound for Nikki and John Cena. There is Ooh. no rebound. There's their, no their rebound. Their contract's over. Their contracts are over. Yeah. They're not getting drafted. They the... go they go home. We'll see we'll see we'll see them on like I don't know. Not a cameo on the on the Miz and Marie show? What do they call Maybe. the Miz and Marie show? Is it Miz and Mrs. Miz and Mrs. That's a good one. Yeah. That's that is a real smart. thing. Yeah, hey, no, seriously, that's a real thing. Yeah, Miz and Mrs. I really wish that the season three of Total Bells was just Miz and Maurice. Nikki moving out. Like like be, being John Cena <laughs> and Nikki Bella. That is the concern, for an, isn't it? For an entire That's season. a special. It's Nikki moving out of the house. That's John Cena's house. Oh, jeez. You think oh. the cameras are there? You think you think this is something we see in six months on Total Bellas? Uh, You're going to see her at a pawn shop selling that ring. Uh, oh, jeez. Do you blame her? I wouldn't. Nope. Yeah, yeah, her. that's true, too. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the contract. Any gifts oh. given to you must be returned upon uh, uh, breaking here of the... To, here to forthwith. Here to forthwith. Yes, exactly. Here's, here's the bigger question, bigger than the ring. Didn't he buy her a house? Did yeah. he? Yeah, because she was, yeah, cause she was yeah. selling that house and she fell in love with it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah, his name is it in. Is it amicable? You know, either way, lawyers are involved in this. It is TV, though, Missy. Oh, so that's why we haven't seen David Otunga recently. Oh, no. That's yeah, why that's the reason. It all connects. Wait, so is is he trying to get together with John or Nikki? Yes. There you go. Dave, Whoever, Dave says... Whoever will have him. Dave says that... Uh, yeah, Dave says Nikki moving in with Brie and Brian. That could be a reality show in itself. Ooh. Oh, I She's would the love nanny. to see... Nikki She's a nanny, the, nanny, yeah. Nikki, <laughs> nanny, Nikki. Nikki is the au pair for baby for baby birdie. I th I think she's gonna move Speaking back. She's pairs. gonna move back in with yeah, Johnny yeah. Ace and her mom. <laughs> um. All right. All right. You, you want to book the rebound for um for John Cena? Here we go. Singled out the movie starring John Cena. <laughs> is that it? That's oh it. God. I used you, to love you that take, show. You take Who the did? MTV game show. You turn it into a worldwide. Road trip search and all of the A list um, Hollywood women that we can get are on like a search to try and get to um, Pismo Beach. I don't know, somewhere, Pismo somewhere Beach. tropical. Do we bring back so, Jenny so, McCarthy so, and and, uh, and Chris, Chris Hardwick? Hardwick. You, you bet your so fucking ass we do, Sorg. I have, I have an idea with that. What if you do both John Cena and Nikki? And then at the end, they can choose each other if they want oh. after seeing everyone else. Oh. But see, you're not booking rebound. You're booking reuniting. Well, that's their choice. 
Okay, that's fair. You never know. Sometimes they gotta let it go so it can come back. I don't know who's coming back in this oh, one. Oh, and Sork, and then Mariah Carey shows up to sing Butterfly. Boom! You just booked it. Booked it. Spread your wings and prepare to fly. You have become a butterfly. And yes, you throw the John Cena rapadu in there with with the whole song. I don't know yes. about that last part, but. <laughs> I like where your head's at. The Mariah Carey part of the Rapidu. He had you until Rapidu. All of the above. (laughs) Mariah Carey Rapidu. She's going to be lip singing it anyway. Singled out. There has to be a Mariah Carey appearance. Because if we're bringing back MTV in the late nineties, Mariah Carey (laughs) has to be there. Will Carson Daly be there? Oh yes. Yes, Carson Daly will be there. Oh boy. If he can do a cameo in Josie and the Pussycats, he can do a cameo in this. (laughs) That was like ten years ago. It doesn't matter. That might be 15 years ago, yeah, actually. That was a while ago. That, that, was, probably, that was probably 15 years ago. It does not matter. I think what that is, was 18 years ago. What is Carson Daly doing? Hey, Siri, when it, did Josie and the Pussycats come out? Isn't Carson Daly the host of The Voice still? Is he? No. No? No. Yeah, that was 2001 sure. for Josie and the Pussycats. 15 years ago. Uh, s- yes. No, 17 years ago. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Did Siri just That's make fine. an appearance it still on works. the Mayhem Show? Yeah, Siri, yeah <laughs> Siri did just make an appearance and, and answered Tina, the question right. And Tina, yes. <laughs> Tina, Chris Hardwick is reprising his role because God knows he Sorry. needs to host something. Yes, Chris Hardwick with less of the alcohol. Um, <laughs> that was geez. Peter Hardwick. That was Peter? Uh, Peter. What? That was Peter Hardwick. No, it's a, it's a gimmick. He calls his drunk self Peter Hardwick. Oh, I haven't caught up with the podcast for a while, so... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I can never remember where it is because they changed the name. <laughs> I can't spell it. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I don't think we can get any better for that for booking that rebound. <laughs> I really I would watch that show. You would watch that show? I would watch it. Like the search for I love. Would. Let's send the pitch. Oh, hey, totally you know would. what? We oh, know okay. some people. So, VH1 will take bachelor. it. Wait, wait, wait. Now what that- if John Cena's the new Bachelor? They, oh, geez. Of course. Oh, that's actually uh, a producer. I was just producer say that. Missy. Oh. I was just gonna say that. Uh, you have yeah. you have Nikki as the Bachelorette, and you have John as yes. the Bachelor. Yes, and you oh, have them God. like in tandem with other suitors. Jesus, you want to talk about ratings well, bonanza? That's kind of like uh, <laughs> that's kind of like the original Dating Naked, right? They had the two meet each other first, and then they went on dates with everyone else, and had them come on. And at the end, they could either choose each other or choose someone they met. Hmm. I don't think they chose each other, though. I don't know. I, I think there should just be a new reality show with John Cena living on um, Edge's couch, eating cereal. <laughs> right, because like he's depressed. the one that got kicked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah, it'd be funny. Why to not? See. Why not? What am I? None of this do? is real, anyways. Who cares? <laughs> what am I going to do with all of my all of my movie roles? Bobby says that Dolph would edge. run in for Nikki's Bachelorette. <laughs> you can totally oh, wow. do cross promotion. And you could have the cricket, cricket wireless girl be on John's Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, that other guy was really pushy and made weird references about my data plan. Uh, anyways, um, uh, on that note, if you have any ideas, uh, is it Carson Daly? No, isn't it Ryan Seacrest is on the Today Show? Am I wrong about that? It doesn't Today matter. Show. Is it? Does anybody watch the Today they're, Show? They're, they're I, the I same person. Ryan, I believe the same it's person. Yeah, that's same true. Person. That's true. Um, <laughs> no, one of them. One of them is entertaining. Which one? Carson Daly, Daly is not in. That's Brian. That's Brian Seacrest. No, I... oh, Carson oh, Daly okay. is on there. For... Oh. Yes. Boy, that's a lineup. That's. I don't wow. know if you guys heard that. That was off mic. What but... a career but Carson just... Daly had. Can we talk about that real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Did any of it involve wrestling? No, but he's so relevant. He's still relevant. <laughs> he's been relevant so is Al. So is Al Roker. Does he still do the? Hey, he, does he, he still do like the music interview show that's on at like three a.m. after everything interesting? I mean, he's been going since what, like ninety eight? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, good for him. <laughs> anyway, I mean, back to wrestling. Hey, Josh Matthews, everyone. Josh, Josh Matthews. <laughs> oh no! I actually no. do. I actually do have a comment about Josh Matthews. What, what, do, you, what do you have about Josh Dave Matthews? Matthews right? What's that? Not to be confused. With Dave no, Matthews. definitely Josh Matthews. Okay, one of those people. So, Josh Matthews, original tough enough, right? Yeah, he is still in the business. Yeah, can we talk about that? Uh, and, and can I point out? And I know, I know, Mike, you've been really, and yeah, I think the stuff where he's like a heel or something on Impact Wrestling is pretty shitty. But him and Matt Stryker on commentary was reminds me like, hey, he's not half bad, right? No, you know? when, jo- when Josh Matt, because when I was doing my Mania rewatch. The mania where Michael Cole was a heel commentator and Josh was actually the lead play-by-play guy. 
Mm-hmm. Josh Matthews was great. Like Josh Matthews was totally fine. He was there was nothing wrong. I take I would take Josh Matthews from WrestleMania 24 over Michael Cole 2018. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's not a that's not a joke. Like it's just he decided to go heel for whatever reason and no. But just I mean it's like that that's just amazing. You never know where wrestling can take someone going on a reality TV show and mm-hmm. making a career out of it. Or 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 the fact that I went two nights in a row I went to movies. I have a movie pass. I'm not like rich or something. Uh, and uh, I, I, I saw a movie with John Cena, Blockers, and the next night I saw Rampage with The Rock. And I was just like, wow, like life is wrestling Guys, at this point. The, once, the guy that once held the collection plate for Reverend Devon is going to punch Thanos in his fucking face. <laughs> like, that's where we're at. Deacon Batista is going to punch the mad titan in his yeah, fucking but, face. But really, is Drax much different than Leviathan? <laughs> no, but that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> is The Rock much different from any character The Rock has played? Yeah. Is, is Schwarzenegger? The Rock much different from Smolder Bravestone? No, he's Who? not. Smolder Bravestone. Also, also who's, there wait, were wait, wait, there that? were that's the that's his character that's from, from Jumanji. Jumanji. Yeah. It the it Jumanji is a good movie. Jumanji's, Jumanji's very good, actually. Also, strangely, still playing uh, in a theater uh, very close to where I saw Rampage. So it was like, how many rock mm. movies are you allowed to have in a theater at one time? Yeah, four. You know? all, four? All of, four. 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 All of four. Yeah, because the other one's coming out, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the one where he... The Die Hard, um, Die Hard Skyscraper one? Yeah, uh, Skyscraper. Deal. It's Die Hard. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. It is skyscraper is it, just... Well, the wait, Rock he, is Die Hard. Have, like a mechanical leg? Yeah, he's, he's no, yeah, he's got a he's so, got a, well, it's prosthetic leg. It's a, he's got a yeah, prosthetic leg and not, everything, but it's yeah. not like he's not got like okay. like the it's Terminator. Like, it's not like he doesn't have a so jetpack on it. Limp hard. What, what's that? Limp hard. So it's limp hard. <laughs> limp hard. So speaking yeah. of speaking of Dwayne Johnson, someone asked me the day who the king of Hollywood is right now, and I yeah. said Dwayne Johnson. Has yes. to be easy. How many movies it's, does he have out at a time? He's yeah. always on everything. He's yeah. still he's been relevant for the past. 20 some years there is no other action hero on his level no you know no, like not. since arnold no what about no. boone 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 is the next one okay uh john morrison is is um john morrison is well on his way to be in the next kevin sorbo have you seen boone the the way, Hunter? i haven't but i've heard about oh it oh my god you I know. it's on it's netflix, netflix. I need it's on to. netflix I you have no excuse now yes. yeah, everybody out there the Bounty Hunter. that's your that's your uh, homework. homework yeah yeah there you but, go. but yeah, I have to say, Dwayne Johnson, King of Hollywood. Like, I, I still, I stand by that. And if anyone disagrees, they can take it up with me on my Twitter and or Facebook. What, what is Twitter? Twitter is at Calvin underscore Couture. No, no, no. I mean, what is <laughs> and okay. and do you know oh, what the Rock says? Oh. Do you know yeah, what the Rock what says for declaring him the King of Hollywood? <laughs> hmm. He says, "You're welcome," because they're gonna make him a wanna too. Let's let's be real. They're like, gonna make. He's all over. He's all over it. Children movies, Moana. action movies. Like, it's good. I actually watched it. And, and say, and how say, have you not seen Moana? I just, I haven't seen it either. Chance. Sword. No. Oh my god, yet. he's nope. really. I've heard good in things it. though. But I saw Ferdinand with John Cena. It was significantly better than Doom. <laughs> and it's significantly oh, good. better than wow. Ferdinand. <laughs> oh good. And like, and John Cena's kind of not in the Doom portion of his career. He is. No, he is. Blockers was good. No, no, but he's he's not because he's, he's doing bad comedies instead of bad the, action. He's movies. in the he, He's in the rundown. He's in the rundown phase. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> he is in the rundown phase. He's in the rundown um Southland Tales. Well, that's not a good sign for anybody who's in the movie with him. I prefer him I in like I haven't seen many of them in anything recently I either. prefer Cena in like the cameo appearances. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. like like the, the the boyfriend in well, the in the uh Train Amy. wreck. Yeah, and train and wreck. I was thinking, like, whenever uh, is he. It, is it this year that Bumblebee comes out, though? Oh. Because. We'll see Cena, how that goes. He's going to jump up a level. You know what? Good acting is not a requirement for that show. Don't get me started on Transformers. Fuck. Okay, back to wrestling. Moving on. Moving back on. To back to wrestling. Back to wrestling. Mambo, say something. Mambo, say something about Transformers. Superstar uh, Shaker. Or wrestling. I don't like or say, some, some, don't like say something about. So, no. how about that Jeff Jarrett? Yeah, how about Jeff Jarrett, Mambo? Speaking of, speaking of people whose lives are significantly better after leaving Impact. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, his, his Hall of Fame speech was quite charming, but they should have kept the song at the first verse. Yeah, that was too yeah, much. Yeah, they shouldn't was, have done a, a song. 
I gotta say, Honky Tonk Man did, I think, the entirety of his song when he was in IWC a couple months ago. Yes. M- Mambo can tell us song. about that. Hold up. Old, old oh, song. Mambo. Old song. He say hold. He did the whole song. Did you have to? Did you have to lay there at the uh, while at ringside while he did the entire song? He's, yeah, his entire did, song. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yes. Because you you had an interaction with the Honky Tonk Man. Yeah, it was really fun. How did that go? <laughs> Excuse me. How did it go? It's good. It went good. Yeah. So the crowd did it was, go well? Was a big surprise I mean, for the crowd. Yeah, yeah. So it so, was an announcement. So when he came out after my promo, yeah. the crowd was like, on he fire. interrupted your promo. Yeah, I that did. son of a bitch. Yes, yes, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> I think you you were showing your talents. You were dancing. Yeah, I danced first, and when I want to sing something, and I say about I'm better of Jeff Jarrett, I'm better than Elias, I'm better than him, and he came out. So, but was really fun, really fun. Fun really, fact: really, Mumbo yeah. does have the voice of an angel. Yeah, but, oh, really? <laughs> but, yeah, but, but no, but it was really good segment. For my idea, so the the crowd was really happy about that. So it was a big surprise. So I, a lot of time the IWC do that surprise. So the show before this that one, so Sandman came like a surprise too. So mm-hmm. it's every time, boy, that's a drastic contrast. I mean, like for, for say the IWC like do that big surprise, like the yeah. announcement, like some superstar and. So you never know what's up in there. Yeah. When you show up there, you never know who you're going to run into in the back in the backstage, right? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Sandman and you, Honky yeah, you, Talk Man doing karaoke yeah, you go, in yeah, the yeah. back. You go to the bathroom, you come out, yeah, Sandman, hi, let's say hello. <laughs> what's up, Sandman? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think they were sneaking Sandman in and past our hard cam guy, and he just like, so um, Sandman just got brushed by me. Uh, what's happening? Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a fun time for everybody over there at I- IWC. Uh, which you can check out, our friends over there, uh, at, no, we're going to talk to Occupy Pro Wrestling, because I skipped a segment because we kind of rearranged things a little bit, my apologies. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Occupy Pro Wrestling, uh, our, our friends over there. Hey, do you know, pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form. You know that, Mambo? What? Excuse me? Uh, pro wrestling is a crazy and wild art form. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Occupy Pro Wrestling is here uh, to look at what makes it fun, uh, like 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 Mambo's dancing, uh, featuring articles, blogs, podcasts that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in the smart mark. Check it out, our friends over there, Alex Cars and the gang over at OccupyProWrestling.com. That's power the number two the smarks.com. And uh, I know they've been doing a lot of uh, fun uh, uh, live vlogs during, like, WrestleMania and a lot of the bigger wrestling shows. Uh, so if you uh, want to follow along with that, please go check them out, OccupyProWrestling.com. And thank you to them for supporting uh, the shows we're doing here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show as well. I know they share a lot of this show and the Indie Mayhem Show. So uh, a big thanks to them. All right, guys. It's time to find out. And you guys, too, in the chat room, what did you learn from pro wrestling this week who wants to go first i learned our truth is still employed by wwe <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's been gone for a while yeah. hasn't he well i think he had a brief run in at the in the andre the giant he did Royal. yeah he did he did, he did. that was his did, big did Goldust dab at him is that he right did. Yep. Okay. yeah okay i thought i saw that i was like did he just dab at our yep mm-hmm. yeah it was that was big that was a big, that was a big, <laughs> yep. that was a big return big return for our truth yeah. Maybe well, that he's, album. He's gonna come. get a push. I is, that, feel is that album gonna come out someday? You think? I think it's already out. Is it? Yeah, I just don't think it was. Where do I find it? Is it under Ron Killings' "Our Truth"? Like, is it on Google yeah. Music? It's on iTunes. It's on iTunes. I know his songs are on iTunes. It's it, like his, his songs. His songs are actually on iTunes. I'm gonna rock those out. That's like the new workout music or something. <laughs> that should be the music before the show. Before this show? Yeah, you know Instead how you are, you're always Edge? blasting metal? No, it's MetalEdgePGH.com. Well, that's fine. Have them, to, have them to play our, our truth. Yeah, they're a metal station. They can do a cam... Uh, uh, what's not a cameo. What are they called? Cover. cover. A, a cover? No, they're not allowed to cover. No, that's a, they're not allowed to do a cover. Really? Yeah, that's a, that's a rule. That's how you don't get Jeez. fees what a from... a strange rule. Yeah. That's, a, that's odd. Well, that's that's how you don't get the RAAA to uh, make you pay fees hmm. to them. So, Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, Mambo. Yeah. What did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned about Mark Herring is a good guy. <laughs> These are the best things I learned this week. He's really a good guy. Not only in the ring, but I mean behind the ring. The in-ring, what you see. So he's really, really, really an awesome guy. Did you learn any, any good lessons from him? 
He any, to- any good piece of advice? He told me a couple of good advice, yes. Yes? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Calvin? Ooh, I learned that uh, Katie Arquette is still the queen of the silver screen. Uh, I just think she proved that at Night of Superstars when she defeated the bloody adorable. Um, yeah, and I know, and I did also learn that uh, wrestling's still fun. And he learned he needed to improve because he lost the Battle Royal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I did, but I did have. I will. I will shout out to Mamba for this. He was. He was. He was huge in the Rumble. Uh, Mr. Daniel Hooven tried to lift up my shirt and chop me, and then Mamba was there to pull my shirt back down. I tried to save him twice, twice, so, twice, and after that they they throw me out from the Rumble. So I definitely save him. Yeah, he owes you one. To, to become the first contender for the title. So yeah, tag partners. Uh, there you go, Golden Sheik International. Yeah. International. International. Golden Sheik International. International. We also we also go by Picture Perfect, Justin. Mm. Excellent. Uh, man, Mike, what did you learn this week in wrestling? I learned that Hilly Bi- Hillbilly Jim's ramblings was a good move here to complete over a third of a 1,400 piece Lego set. <laughs> he was building like, Legos like, while he was watching I, back the Hall of Fame. I'm not joking. I think I got through at least three or four bags of my Hulkbuster just during Hillbilly Jim's speech. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. You Very know, good motivator. and I gotta say, I think Hillbilly Jim's speech was fine by itself. Nope. But not as part of a four-hour show. No. Like, no, I would listen not. to a podcast that was Hillbilly Jim's speech. Sorg, it any... It's not... What's that? It was not meant to be a four-hour show. It's not four meant hour to show. be a four-hour show. If you pull show. it up no, on the you... WWE Network... It says right when it says start from the beginning. It says three hours at the beginning. Yeah. But then you open it up and it's four and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. So it's if you look, room. if you look later in the night, people like WWE superstars and audience people left because they had to go to other shows. Mm-hmm. They had to go to other shows and they had to get some sleep. Yeah. Like if you watch up at Goldberg's speech, the only person they show in the crowd is Goldberg's son and Sting. That's those are the only people they cut to because guess what? Everyone else is fucking gone. Jeez. What? It's like it's like the Hall of Fame was the Halloween Havoc with Goldberg versus DDP. <laughs> wow. Oh, that seems that seems appropriate. What about you, uh, producer Missy? I learned that it's important to double check and triple check that when you hit the record button, it actually records. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there, there might be an interview where we don't have video for, but we do have audio of said interview. So you have something. So uh, you'll be able to hear the interview with Ophidian and Dutters talking about butts and uh, Ar- and Arugula. Ophidian's probably better if he's a mystery what he looks like anyway. Do you really need video of that anyways? Because you can't see his face. Makes it more mysterious. Yeah, exactly. For all you know that you did a voiceover of him at the that video that's true that, that's true it's not like you see his mouth moving in nope. that mask either although did you do that thing we talked about yesterday which thing with the wop 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 app with with that with the the photo of ophidian and debtors oh i did that Ooh. i well I, I did with that but hers was the only face it would detect because he has no face it, no there's a mouth going around his face i don't think it's going to detect that is no, that no is that similar to the the sid justice Yes, it's the exact same on Facebook. Facebook. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not? that is the Snapchat thing. We're talking about. Oh. I think it's Mug Life. Um, I'm really afraid to unleash this on you guys. Do um, it. Well, real quick, what was the hashtag for the Sid the Sid Justice pr- uh, promo? Because I was trying to find it on Twitter and I could not find it again. I tried to screenshot it because there was a bunch of them. There was like a page one, and I couldn't find it again on Twitter. And I oh, wanted no, to like they did a page one. I wanted to like. Hit, like I wanted to hit myself for it because I could not find it. And I, I just saw I just saw that somebody posted it. So if somebody has that hashtag, please, please chat it so I can find it. Thanks. <laughs> well, I remember. I learned. Um, just looking at. Uh, actually, from the chat room here, uh, let's see. Uh, Bobby learned that Buddy Murphy is too fat to wrestle. What? Wow. Well, that's no, harsh. no. He he didn't make the two hundred five weight limit. Oh, so they didn't have him on this week. Uh, he also learned that his boo is Team Blue, uh, Asuka. Uh, also, he learned, he's got a lot of them. He learned that the tag team division on SmackDown is stacked now, along with the uh, women's division. SmackDown is going to be awesome. 
Um, and Dave, uh, Dave Potter learned that AJ needs to wear a cup. Mm-hmm. Also, Kurt isn't uh, Kurt is not a good GM with a superstar shakeup. There you go. I see him losing his temper. Yeah, what, what Kurt Angle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit. Um, let's see. I I learned this week. Um, I I learned this week from wrestling that. Uh, geez, there's so much. <laughs> <laughs> um geez i'm blanking there's a lot there's a lot that happened i'm blanking i have nothing so did you learn what the smoother was i did, I did learn what the smoother was from your videos <laughs> there was there was that um and, and will said he learned that saturday is going to be awesome fun saturday oh rwa i'm sadly missing rwa this week and they have some mystery guests uh showing up there uh, though I do, I do encourage those in the area to go check out Renegade Wrestling Alliance, uh, rwalive.com. Also check out indywrestling.us. You can find matches with Calvin Couture, as well as Mambo Italiano as part of that. As far as uh, uh, Rise and IWC. Yes. Uh, I forget. Have you guys been up to Premiere? No. no. I've been up to Premiere. You have been to Premiere. I thought so. So, uh, but you just search their names and you find out everything that they've been up to in the uh, greater Pittsburgh and Cleveland area, mm-hmm. I think, for the most part, uh, over at IndieWrestling.us. And I also encourage you to check out the Twitch channel we have going on, where we're featuring a lot of that. Actually, if you missed it, we did play something special. We did play The Legend of Virgil and his, uh, traveling, merchan- le- his traveling merchandise table. So uh, we're going to drop in stuff like that every once in a while. If you've ever wanted to sample some of these things before buying um, and, and see what IWC like, what RWA, uh, RWA is like, what Rise Wrestling with a Y is like, what uh, uh, CKCW out of Cleveland, Premier Championship Wrestling, uh, our old Prime Cuts uh, selections on there. Um, it's one way to do it. We, we are, are typically recording, or I'm sorry, streaming li- uh, uh, shows, not live, they're pre-recorded. Um, from noon on uh, daily at this point and intend to do that for the foreseeable future. And we're also sprinkling in there a lot of uh, interviews as well. Uh, so maybe you'll see uh, Calvin's interview in there. And uh, those will be on there for you guys to watch as well in the archives, uh, all the Indie Mayhem show uh, ones that we have going on there. And if you want to purchase some stuff that you're seeing over on that stream, uh, our monthly code, our, our monthly deal for April for Indie Mayhem or Indie Wrestling.us is uh, 25% off of video on demand titles. Uh, these guys are already around, you know, three or four dollars for you guys to rent these titles. They work on your uh, your, your 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 iPhones and Android devices and uh, tablets as well. Use the promo code RAIN 2018 rain because it's supposed to be raining in april not snowing (laughs) but anyways uh no rain 2018 because it's a really nice idea right now in cold cold pittsburgh uh but no check it out india wrestling.us and check out the twitch channel so we got some uh, great guests coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Laura Loveless is going to join us next week on the show, scheduled to appear. And, of course, we're, if you're in the Air- Pittsburgh area, uh, we're going to be having the greatest Royal Rumble here at noon on Friday, the 27th of April. Also scheduled to appear, Max Out. Speaking of Virgil, Max Out, who we did the music video with Virgil for Kayfabe, uh, they're going to be joining us here on the uh, May 1st because they're going to be part of the Mill Bell Music Festival. Lee Moriarty is going to be on here from uh, Rise Wrestling and some other great promotions in the area. No, no, not down with Lee. I, I just, I think the gold will look better around my waist. Mm-hmm. But you know. you're looking for that grand championship at Rise, right? Maybe someday. Mm-hmm. He'll be here on the eighth, and of course, uh, uh, Toddy Tadera that's been joining us in the chat room all night of the Thrifty Podcast will be joining us here uh in mid-may to see uh, keep an eye on our facebook page for announcements on who's going to be joining there and who's going to be joining us for the indie mayhem show uh talks with some people about joining us i'm trying to get a lot of cleveland people on the show these days because uh and, and seeing if we can get them in studio when they're i mean they come to town anyways for iwc and rise and other promotions so uh we have a little bit of a list of guys you may have been seeing me read some of their literature on instagram uh, for Wrestling Mayhem show in the recent uh, week as well. So, Mambo Tanyano, Calvin, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Mambo, uh, of course, we're going to be doing an Indie Mayhem show after this for you guys. For you guys uh, 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 do an interview. 
gonna gonna find out where Mambo comes from. I mean, I think we have an idea, but in general, <laughs> where can people find you online? They can f- find me on Instagram, on uh, Twitter, mm-hmm. with uh, my name, with my wrestling name, so Mambo Italiano Wrestling, mm-hmm. and on my Facebook with my real name, Andrea Guercio. All right, it's Andrea. Andrea. I how is make make like, it make it easier. It's Andrea <laughs> for your spelling. <laughs> uh, awesome and Calvin Couture. Yes, uh, fan page Calvin Couture on Facebook, Instagram Calvin Couture, and Twitter at Calvin underscore Couture. There you go. Boom. And of course, boo. Boom. Boom. Okay. <laughs> uh, Golden Chic International representing here uh, tonight on the Mayhem Show. Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitters. Oh, I muted you. The Twitter is I, I talk about wrestling things and I talk about other things. There you go. Mutilator Larry. Especially playoff hockey. I'm, I'm going to be talking playoff hockey. Mutilator Larry, who does not uh, conduct his own uh, Twitter. He has people for that. I do. You do. You should hire those people. You can find them at... <laughs> people, you can find them at Sidekick Media Mayhem Services. Sidekick Media Services. And what a plug. Man. <laughs> How are things going on down in the Girth Cave? It's dry down there now. Thanks it's for dry it. down there. Yeah, right? everything is frozen from the fucking snow. Do you have heat? Do you have heat down there? Yeah, the heater's down there. He has the, heat the, with the, the snow, apparently. The heat. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It, nothing's frozen down there, but it is dry. Are we going to be able to tell people what you do down there? Other than soon, probably next we, week. Next week, probably next week. Are we going to have a big announcement next week? Maybe we'll see. You have a sign to hang out front? No. We don't. We'll see. We'll work I mean, on that. We have the si- that sign. No one has a sign. It, I mean, you have I, a sign. You have, sign. You have a wall. I mean, we, we have like a window cling. Is but. it going to be such a large announcement that it's going to be a earthquake worthy announcement? No, that's terrible. You're fired. I think we need to, re- <laughs> I think we need to rework your brand. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, thank you everybody for joining us. It's joined us through the 19. Alex Miller still with us. Wheels, Bobby F. J. Town, Dave, Toddy, and the rest uh, uh, all night long uh, helping celebrate mayhem with us in pro wrestling. Uh, until next week, mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.